All right. Okay, let's get started. We're going to continue the discussion we were having on memory system today, actually. I had lots of slides that, that I promised to you. I modified them a little bit to adapt to the papers that you've been reading. So hopefully this will be more of a discussion. Uh, how, many, how many of you sent us your pre-proposals in the meantime? Okay, so we're waiting for some more, looks like. Okay, let's get started. I'll give you more stuff. Basically, let's talk about the review assignments. I have a question. Yeah, oh yeah. Teams. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's talk about it offline. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's the trader here? I am. <laughs> you are? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's, do, let's talk about it later. Yeah. You'll need to be part of a, another pre proposal now. Yeah, at this point, you can change. You don't need to ask me, actually. Yeah. Okay, no other questions on this topic? Okay, so I'll talk about review assignments and we'll continue the rethinking memory to system design with hopefully a lot more discussion. So you were all expecting this, right? <laughs> so th these are due uh, next Tuesday, the same time again. And I'm, I'm happy that a lot of you are entering reviews. Uh, as I said in the Piazza discussion, you probably will not get a whole lot of feedback, but the hope is that, again, you'll read the other reviews, see what you missed or what you've thought of, what you haven't thought of, what others have thought of, that's, why you, that's how you learn also. But I would like people to discuss the papers also. That's something that's not happening as much. Reviewing is happening, which is good, but the discussion is not happening. So how do we make it happen? Because clearly we're not going to be able to discuss every single paper here, right? We'll talk about some of the things, some of the aspects. But I'd like more stuff happening on Piazza. And if Piazza is not the right forum, on the review site. You guys are not interested in that? Yeah, basically, yeah. If you can do that online, that would be good also. Post threads on Piazza? Okay. So you would like, it, like that to happen for each of the papers? Okay. Okay, so that's a good idea. We should probably start thread for each of the papers. And people will contribute? Who will contribute? <laughs> volunteers, so volunteer, that's good. There are some volunteers, so we'll do that. Definitely post threads for each of the papers. But I will also require <laughs> that you contribute to at least one thread. Okay? Since I don't see many hands. <laughs> so at least one thread. You can. <laughs> good one. <laughs> yeah, one, uh, one thread or one warp. Well, if I do one warp, then you'll have to contribute to all of the threads, and you'll need to <laughs> do it in lockstep. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, contribute to the discussion in at least one thread, and that means at least one response, a reasonable response <laughs> to a thread. OK? Is that fair? I don't want to force you, but since I don't see a lot of hands, this is probably a good way of starting the discussion. And remember, participation is important in this course. That's the whole point of the course, actually. The point of the course is not you, for you to take the exams, so discuss ideas. OK? OK, so review paper. This was the uh, optional paper last time. Now it's the review. Uh, I'll initially assign some of the papers that I have been a part of. I think it's really important. That way we can actually set some research projects. But there will be a lot of other papers later coming on. But this is about read disturbers and NAND flash memory. It's very interesting, I think. It's fascinating, actually, this kind of errors in memory. And mitigation techniques. And there's also related papers. We don't post them. But if you have time, I would recommend. I'll give you related papers also. And this is about the data retention errors in flash memory again. A lot of the errors in flash memory are fascinating. Figuring out like how these errors happen, how how big they are, uh, and how to mitigate them actually is fascinating. Also, so this paper, for example, as you will read, uh, it'll talk about. So read disturb is basically you hammer a row, <laughs> and then something gets disturbed. It's very similar to DRAM. It happens in Flash also in a page, right? So it turns out there's variation in the cells. So some cells get affected a lot more from this read disturb than other cells, and 
once you get a failure in flash, you can take advantage of this. And this paper proposed a mechanism where you, after you get a failure, you, you think your drive is dead. But you can recover the data. What you can do is you can keep disturbing and inducing more errors. And then you analyze which cells were disturbed more or less. And based on that, you can actually probabilistically predict what their value would have been. That's, it's a really cool idea, I think. Basically, you get an error, but you keep generating more errors. But because of the way cell, uh, cells vary in their response to the read disturb mechanism, you can figure out what their original state was probabilistically. But yeah. at the same time, you induce more damage, like at cell expression. So you That's right. If you keep like, putting in errors, you actually damage it and ruin your computation. Well, uh, the, 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 the thing here is you actually copy it somewhere else. So the damage, you contain the damage. And you know where the error is because uh, errors happen in flash drives when error correcting codes fail. They say, oh, I cannot correct this error. So you know where the error is. It's a, it's, it's a cool idea, I think. You can t take a look at it. And there's a similar mechanism here that takes advantage of the data retention variation. Yes? Is that what the question is more for one that you sell, or is it like a temporary uh, Actually, it could be either one. But the, the, what, what we targeted here was the lifetime, basically. Basically, your lifetime, you, you use it a lot. And, but it could be pr because of a temporary error also. OK. So the second paper, so we'll walk a, lot, a little bit more into memory. This is actually one of the first papers that looked at a new memory technology as part of main memory, which is phase change memory. Uh, if you've heard about 3D XPoint, uh, there are a lot of indications that it could be phase change memory. I don't know if it'll be part of DRAM. So 3D XPoint is, uh, this is the, I guess, uh, mm, marketing part maybe <laughs> of architecture. But basically, Intel and Micron recently announced that there is this technology called 3D XPoint, which so is actually, yeah, which is actually very fast. You can, you can Google it. Maybe we can put some links up also. But if you Google 3D XPoint, you'll find information, which is really fast, high capacity, high density, high endurance. Uh, and it could replace something like DRAM or maybe Flash. So that, they were not very clear on that. But basically, uh, looking at emerging memory technologies is really interesting. And this is a paper that looks at, can you actually make phase change memory uh, as your, uh, your main memory? Uh, and I think these are going to become more real going forward. But this, this is a different kind of research, if you think about it. The previous one is on Flash. That's already an existing technology. But this is a technology that doesn't exist and many people don't believe it yet. But I'd like to assign this one because this is 2009. It hasn't happened yet. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't happen. This is 2015 in Flash. But if you were writing a paper about Flash in 1980s, people would be laughing at you. So that's the interesting thing about technology. Flash memory is perhaps one of the biggest things that has been enabled in the last few decades in computer systems, right? That has actually changed a lot of people's lives, in my opinion. It's everywhere. But if you were looking at it as part of your storage system in 1980s, that would be forward-looking research. So it's good to think about research from this perspective also. So maybe you can say, oh, this doesn't exist yet. It's useless. But who knows, right? It's also good to consider what other technologies there may be. And this is a, a more magazined version of that paper, a little bit slightly different. But uh, it's a related one. So. This, this makes some of the similar points. OK. And the third one, we'll talk about some uh, different, uh, I'd like to give you a, a different perspective. This is about bottleneck identification and scheduling in multi-thread applications. Basically, if you have a multi-thread application, how do you schedule it uh, on heterogeneous cores to maximize performance? And I think this is a cool problem, and it's still a problem. How do you figure out what is your critical path across the threads in your multi-thread application? And that's a tough problem. It's an unsolved problem. So maybe, maybe that will give you some ideas. And this is a, a follow-up paper to this paper whose basic idea is if you get to a critical section, lock, unlock, let's say, instead of executing that critical section on a small core, ship it to a large core. And the large core executes it. And hopefully, it executes it much faster. That way, the threat serialization that could potentially be caused by a critical section is alleviated. And this paper generalizes that idea to bottlenecks. It's not only about critical section, but there are many other things that may actually limit the progress of a program. And it does it in a nicer way, because not all critical sections will limit your, limit your progress. Right? Sometimes 
you get to a critical section as a thread, there's no contention for that critical section, right? That means that that critical section is not on the critical path of execution, probably. It could be, actually, but it, it, it's, it may not, it, it's less likely. OK, and this is an optional paper, so we'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some quality of service. So since it's optional, I'm not going to talk about it, but it's another topic. Basically, it uh, looks at uh, some mechanisms to throttle cores uh, such that you can provide fairness in the memory system. But it, as, as you can guess, this is going to be required reading. So <laughs> we'll talk about branch prediction tomorrow. If your branch prediction is last time prediction, then your prediction should be, oh, this will be required next week. <laughs> but I may change my mind. We could go to phase change, and then your branch prediction will be incorrect, right? OK. Is this the date we decide for the project proposal? 25th. Oh, was it 25th? OK. So I guess I'll dynamically update this. So this is good. Then you can do your reviews and then your project proposal. So another possible project, this, is, this, uh, this came to us while I was discussing with Nandita today. But basically, this is something that I hadn't thought of that could be a really interesting project, especially for those of you who don't know what to do and you want a relatively structured project. There's this thing called GPU Warp Scheduling Championship. It's a very timely championship. Basically, the key idea is if you have warps in a GPU, how do you schedule them to maximize performance? I think it's performance in this case. I don't know if they look at energy efficiency. I don't remember. But your project can be bigger than this. Uh, but I would uh, suggest you take a look at it. Let's see if we can. It's going to be the first championship. If you win it, you can go to Hawaii. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll pro uh, I'll, you'll, you'll have the slide, so you'll have the link. Uh, but there is infrastructure that's provided, GPGPU sim, uh, and the configuration files are provided. There are the metrics that are provided. So there are test applications that are provided. Infrastructure is already ready. The ideas, that will need to come from you. So it could be a very interesting project for those of you interested in GPUs, uh, because you can get started right away. And you can actually do really interesting research, in my opinion, this uh, is an area. Uh, maybe I should have assigned a warp scheduling paper, but now that I think about it. If you're interested, I'll, I can give you warp scheduling papers. Mm. But this is a, another suggestion beyond the project topics. Okay. Now, I don't think you'll be able to submit to the championship, but maybe the next championship, because the championship deadline is October 5th. You've got to be really quick <laughs> to go to Waikiki. Any questions? Any logistic questions? Should we jump into more memory systems? Yes? So, should we like start work on the project or how soon before we work on the proposal and how do we work? Well, I think uh, you should definitely work on the proposal because you're, you're going to need to propose. But anything you 